Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. The Outdoor Adventure Series celebrates individuals and families, businesses, and organizations that seek out and promote the exploration, stewardship, conservation, and access and enjoyment of the great outdoors. Our guest today is Matthew Dickerson. Now, Matthew is a trout and fly fishing enthusiast. He is a manager, editor, and feature writer for Trout Downstream. He is a member of the Outdoor Writers Association of America and has served on the OWAA board since 2021. He is the author of numerous books about trout, fly fishing, rivers, and ecology. And in his spare time, I hear he is a professor at Middlebury College in Vermont. Matthew, it's a pleasure to have you back on the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. Thank you. I enjoyed the, our chance to converse last time you had me. So it was always fun to have a conversation with somebody who appreciates the outdoors and conservation and cares about some of the same things I care about. Fantastic. For our listeners, in the spirit of full disclosure, I had a chance to catch up with Matthew at the Outdoor Writers Conference, the OWAA conference in Casper, Wyoming last month and had a chance to break bread together. And I learned that he was going to be off on a trip to Alaska soon. I thought, wow, I would love to hear about that. But before we go down that path, path Matthew, tell us a little bit about what's been happening since you and I first got together. God, it was back in early 2021 when you were on the show and you were discussing the launch of your new newest book at the time, A Fine Spotted Trout on Coral Creek. And so love to hear what's been going on with you. Well, I think one thing, I guess, is that book that I had been working on for probably since 2016 is actually in print now. So that's done. That's available. And I've moved on to the next project, I guess. I mean, there's always that. A couple day moment when you finally have, when you've been working on a book for a long time and you have it in your hand and you're all excited about it. And then about three days later, you have to think, okay, now it's time to do the next project. It's like um, now what's next. Right. Yeah. That's right. I think one of the things I'm excited about with the book though, is that I was artist in residence at Glacier National Park in 2017, and I have donated all of my royalties to Glacier National Park Conservancy. Wow. From that book. So the conservancy and therefore the park itself will benefit from sales of the book. And my publisher has actually very generously matched my own contributions of my royalties. So the conservancy will sort of be getting double royalties from that book. What I mentioned that because I know conservation is one of the, you know, uh, conservation of the outdoors is one of the, one of the goals or topics of your show and that you care about conservation and access. And these are things that help, you know, that help the world really. Yeah, what, you what know, the park it, does. most definitely it, it is a growing interest, you know, at the conference in Casper, that seemed to be the consistent theme throughout the entire conference was conversation around conservation, the ecosystem, uh -huh. ecology, and the environment. I, I, I'm curious for a, a national park like Glacier, what does it mean to be an artist in residence? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, it. There's certainly some variation. There's a lot of national parks and some state parks and private organizations that have artist residencies and the residencies can vary a little bit to, or they can vary actually quite a bit from park to park or from a one park to a national forest. And they can vary a little bit from depending on the type of art you do. My primary artwork. Our art actually as a narrative nonfiction writer, a creative writer, although I also have done a lot of photography and my, I don't consider myself primarily a photographer. I'm a writer who does photography also, sure. but my photographs have also appeared in magazines as well. So at the very, I guess at the very basic levels, I mean, I'm in that place doing my art, which means for me, I was in that place doing writing, writing and. I think the part of the goal is that you're, you are doing work that's inspired by the place and that ultimately should benefit, not just my readers, but it should also benefit the park in the sense of giving people more information about the important work that's being done about the park or about how to visit it or what to benefit from it or 
why our national parks are important. I think that was probably also maybe two, two big topics for me that I hope benefited the park is helping people know both what is the important work that's being done. There's a lot of scientific work being done within Glacier National Park about native fish and also why our national park system is important. When you are in this residence, are you physically in the park for a specific period of time? Do you? Yes. So you literally travel there and you stay there. Yeah, I was in the park. There, a lot of these residencies last for anywhere from two to four or six weeks. The okay. Glacier residency was a full month. So I spent the full month of June of 2017 in the park, staying in the park. That, that largely means off grid. So I had no cell service and no internet, which really helps you focus on writing a lot of the daily distractions of being connected to the world are gone. So yeah, it's exactly what it means. I'm spending the whole month in the park, writing about the park, learning about the park, exploring it. I had time spend, spent with National Park Service and USGS scientists learning about the work they did. I spent some time with some of the park rangers and also just some, spent time in listening and hiking and sitting still and learning. 